Hydrology as a science in Canada started at the University of Saskatchewan in the early 1960s with Professor Don Gray, Don Norum, Dave Mayo and others who uh, realized the incredible importance of water to Saskatchewan's agriculture and to our communities and also that our hydrology here is really different from anywhere else in the world. You couldn't take a textbook of hydrology written in, in England or Eastern North America and apply it to this dry, flat, very cold environment. And that was the start of a uh, productive half century of hydrology research that has led in modern times to the Global Institute for Water Security, the Center for Hydrology and other units on campus that are still focused on this problem and improving the uh, scientific tools that underpin our water management. The Division of Hydrology quickly began to realize that snowmelt was the principal manageable water supply over most of Saskatchewan farmland. Uh, that led uh, Professor Gray and Professor Dave Mayo uh, to write uh, the most comprehensive book on snow ever written, the Handbook of Snow, which was uh, uh, published in 1981 and is still sort of the snow bible around the world uh, for anything you might want from building a snow road to managing agriculture and stubble height in Saskatchewan Prairie to the effect of clear cutting on flooding. It's, it's all in here. In the 60s and 70s, the Division of Hydrology had the first uh, hydrological model running in Canada uh, through a, a computer that was purchased in 1970. So the first watershed simulations occurred in Saskatchewan. Um, and uh, there were a massive uh, heavy snow years and flooding in 1974. So it, it quickly came into use for that. But that computer was also used to collect data in the winter and the summer. The university was doing this decades before anyone else was and uh, had the great sense to store it as digital data, not as handwritten records. And so we still have access to this tremendous uh, observational archive going back over many decades. Models developed elsewhere, principally in the United States, failed miserably in Saskatchewan. Uh, they did not predict the stream flow very well or the soil moisture or the snowmelt rate. And so there was an intensive program through the uh, 80s and 90s, one to uh, understand the movement of water into frozen soils. The other was a realization that snow could be managed, that by leaving tall stubble or crap strips or shelter belts, we could keep the snow on the field and keep it from evaporating back to the atmosphere via sublimation. And so that provided the, some of the basis for continuous cropping methods. The question that's driving the research at the site is understanding how stubble affects snowmelt. Half of the quarter section has been harvested in short stubble, and half of it's been harvested to leave tall stubble. Comparing and contrasting how snowmelt processes work between the two sites. Collecting a lot of data at this site. Um, at last count, I think there were 99 sensors deployed in some configuration all trying to capture the energy exchanges between the surface and the atmosphere. We haven't ever deployed this much instrumentation to study this, such a specific snowmelt vegetation interaction before. As well, we have the drone, which we've been flying uh, daily throughout melt trying to capture the spatial characteristics of the snow melt between the contrasting short and tall stubble treatments. Water vapor profiles in two dimensions have not been measured before over uh, such transitions, so it'll be very interesting to see what the data tells us. If we know how stubble affects snow melt, and we know how snow melt affects runoff and infiltration, that's another tool in a farmer's toolbox to manage their land. One of the greatest challenges we have in hydrology is getting an accurate assessment of rainfall and snowfall and how much snow is on the ground. One of the developments we have is an acoustic method to measure the snowpack on the ground. And this is a, a completely novel way to do it. The traditional way is to dig a pit in the snow, pull out samples of the snow and weigh them to get their density, or to insert a tube in the snow pull the tube out and weigh the tube. We are uh, fortunate to have a student who grew up in Saskatchewan and took all his degrees here, Nicholas Keenar. So he developed the system for acoustic sounding of snow. 
that this produces an acoustic wave and it sends the acoustic wave into snow. And essentially what happens is that this acoustic wave is reflected in the snowpack, it comes back and from the reflection we then do digital signal processing to be able to determine the physical properties of snow, such as snow water equivalent, snow depth, snow density, the temperature of snow, and also the amount of liquid water that's present in the snow. Once we have this response back, we can then plug this into models and be able to determine all of these different properties of the snowpack without even having to touch it. So it's a non-invasive method. We're further developing this device right now and we want to cover the prairies and the mountains with them so we have a better water resource prediction for, uh, for our streams and rivers. Dr. Kevin Shook, who is a research scientist uh, working in the Center for Hydrology, is a very detailed modeling of the uh, filling and draining of depressional storage over the prairies. This is any, any potential slough or wetland. Uh, we may not know it if we're going through a dry period that an area will, would fill with water and hold it. Uh, but with the computer simulation, we can artificially dump water onto the landscape and see where it sits. You have to include the effects of culverts because, of course, the culverts allow the water to drain across the roads. Otherwise, the roads will act like uh, a dam. And so we have to put that in our simulation. You can see right here where there's a culvert. You can see this is where the road is. And where there isn't a culvert, the water is ponding up against the road. So the road is acting like a dam. And where there's a culvert, the water can pass right through it. He's been uh, tying this through now to uh, show how you can synthesize the uh, probability of floods on the prairies. Um, and this is very important because a lot of our uh, design methods used in engineering uh, over the prairies uh, presume that floods are caused by rainfall and it's mostly snow, snow melt. And so we're coming up with methods that can be used by engineers in their uh, design of infrastructure uh, based on these uh, flood probabilities that are appropriate for Saskatchewan. The prairie hydrological modeling has advanced quite a lot in the last few decades. The Continued drainage of wetlands has the possibility of increasing peak flows during floods substantially uh, by, by more than half. We're trying to tie this now into the rest of the hydrology of the field from the trapping of the snow with stubble to the infiltration to the formation of cracks in the soils uh, from lack of tillage to the, uh, perhaps in the future the uh, greater formation of hard pans under these soils. So uh, we're trying to get these into the hydrological models in a realistic way so we can anticipate uh, what's next in terms of our changing hydrology as the climate continues to shift a bit and warm up.